there, welcome over here to my kitchen. I am extra excited about today's video because I am going to be showing you 20 extremely easy dinner ideas that my family is just obsessed with. So kind of like an entire month's worth of meals, I am going to be showing you slow cooker recipes, one pot meals, sheet pans, casseroles, you're getting it all today, but I hope you enjoy it and let's go start cooking. I have to show you how to make these chicken fajitas. I really think you'd enjoy this recipe. I'm starting out by slicing one yellow pepper, one red onion, and one red bell pepper into smaller pieces. In my medium sized bowl right here, I have about a pound of some chicken tenderloins. I'm adding all the vegetables that we just sliced up right on top of those tenderloins. Next, you'll wanna drizzle it with about three tablespoons of some olive oil. In this little tiny bowl right here, the seasonings that I have are just a dash of some salt and pepper, three teaspoons of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, cumin, and paprika. Lastly, I just added the juice from a half of a lime. Give this a really good mix. Over to my sheet pan that I did line with some parchment paper, I just added that fajita mixture down. I'm spreading it out as even as possible. This is gonna bake in a preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 20 minutes or until your chicken is completely cooked through. Here's the finished product. I just served my fajitas in a little tiny tortilla. I sprinkled some cheese on top, cherry tomatoes, jalapenos, cilantro, guacamole, and sour cream. These things are so, so delicious. And if you wanted to, you could always use shrimp as a substitute for chicken. I've done that plenty of times in the past. I can make these French onion smothered pork chops for weeks and probably not get tired of them. So now that's what we're making. I'm just going to begin by slicing my two yellow onions into rings, or you could slice them into half moon shapes, kind of whatever your preference is. So now over to my saucepan, I just added two tablespoons of butter and I'm going to add a tablespoon of some olive oil along with the butter. And I'm going to let this melt down and get hot. Once it is melted down and hot, I'm going to add my onions in. After sauteing those onions for about five minutes, I'm going to now be adding in a fourth a cup of some beef broth. I'm going to continue to cook these onions for an additional 12 to 15 minutes or until the onions are extremely tender and golden brown like this. So now I'm just going to remove them to a separate plate and set these onions to the side. After I added my four medium thick pork chops in, I'm going to season them with a little bit of thyme, garlic powder, salt, and pepper on each side. And these pork chops are only gonna cook for about three to four minutes on each side. I did flip them at the halfway point. After I removed our pork chops to a separate plate and set that plate to the side, I added back in our onions to the pan along with two and a half tablespoons of some all-purpose flour. I'm just going to stir the onions and flour together until the flour no longer looks white. And then you're gonna wanna add in one cup of some beef broth and then whisk this all together and let it simmer until this starts to thicken up. Now that my sauce is at the thickness that I like it to be, I'm just adding back in our cooked pork chops and I made sure to cover them in this sauce. I'm going to be adding five slices of some cheese all over the pork chops. I'm gonna place the lid on top for about a minute or two or until the cheese melts and this is the finished product. All I have to say about this meal is, oh dear, this meal is so good. I could eat these smothered pork chops all the time. Like I said before, they are that scrumptious. I just served these pork chops over some mashed potatoes with some steamed peas. This meal is just so amazing. Now we're making this lower carb veggie packed turkey skillet. We are going to cut up our veggies first. So a half of an onion, two zucchinis, and one red bell pepper. You could always use different veggies if you don't care for these specific ones. 
over to my pan on the stove. I have about a tablespoon of hot olive oil in there. I added my onion along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a really good stir and let it saute for about two minutes or until the onion started to get soft. Now I'm adding in my one pound of ground turkey. Break the turkey up and cook it completely through. Once my turkey was cooked, I removed it to a separate plate and then I set this plate to the side. In the same pan we cooked the turkey in, I added an additional tablespoon of olive oil. Once the oil was hot, I added in about three cups of broccoli that I cut into smaller pieces along with the zucchinis and the bell pepper. Saute these veggies around for about three minutes or until they start to soften. Now that my veggies are starting to get softer, I'm adding back in our cooked turkey along with one can of fire roasted tomatoes or you could use regular diced tomatoes, whatever you prefer. For the seasonings, two teaspoons of dried oregano, one teaspoon of dried basil, and a dash of salt and pepper. Stir this together and let it simmer to reduce down for about seven to 10 minutes, I'd say. Now that most of the liquid is gone from our pan, I added in a half a cup of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I let the cheese melt down and then I sprinkled a little bit more cheese on top and then it was ready to serve. I really love how this meal is packed full of so much nutrients. It has so many different veggies in it and it's also lower carb. We love this one. I didn't know how my daughter would think of it at first, but she devoured her plate. These mini meatloafs are such a classic meal for my family in our home, so we're going to start with the meatloaf mixture. In this medium-sized bowl, I'm adding a pound of some ground beef. My ground beef was 80-20. Next, I'm adding one egg, a half of an onion. I did dice the onion super duper finely. Fourth, a cup of some milk, three tablespoons of ketchup, three teaspoons of some minced garlic, a fourth a cup of panko breadcrumbs, just some salt and pepper to your taste, and then a half a teaspoon of paprika, and then a half a teaspoon of some Italian seasoning. You're going to mix this all together. I mixed it with my meat masher, and then I ended up finishing mixing it with my hands. Now to work on the vegetables, I have about a pound of some yellow potatoes. I just cut them into bite-sized pieces. You're gonna wanna add one pound of some green beans to those potatoes. I did trim my green beans and they are fresh. Next, I'm adding one tablespoon of some olive oil with just a dash of some pepper and a teaspoon of some garlic salt. Mix this to combine. After I lined my sheet pan with some parchment paper and dumped my vegetables on that, I'm going to be forming the meatloaf mixture into four mini meatloafs. This is actually gonna bake in my preheated oven to 425 degrees for about 25 minutes. While our dinner is baking away in the oven, I'm going to start on the ketchup mixture for on top of the meatloaf. So I just added in this little bowl, a third a cup of ketchup, a tablespoon of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, just a little dash of some salt and pepper, a half a teaspoon of white vinegar, and you're just going to whisk this all together. So now that my meatloaf is out of the oven, I'm just going to brush this ketchup mixture on top of each of the little meatloafs. This is going to continue to bake in the oven for an additional 15 to 20 minutes. Here's my plate of food ready to be eaten. It's kind of funny, but one of my daughter's first foods she ever enjoyed eating was meatloaf. I think it's just because of the texture maybe, but I don't know. This meal is delicious. Now we're making this chicken stroganoff and you are definitely gonna wanna give this one a try. I'm just slicing up my eight ounces of mushrooms and I diced up a half of an onion. Now over to my pan on the stove, I melted two tablespoons of butter and then I added the mushrooms and the onion and I'm going to cook it for about eight to 10 minutes or until the mushrooms are starting to get a golden color. So while those are cooking away, I'm going to boil up my 12 ounces of egg noodles. 
Now that my mushrooms and onions are soft and golden, I just added in a tablespoon of minced garlic. I gave this a good stir so the garlic could become fragrant. And now I'm adding in a dash of salt and pepper, and then you'll add in two tablespoons of flour and then mix everything together. The last few simple ingredients you'll add in is just a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and then add in your cup and a half of chicken broth. You do want to add the chicken broth in slowly and then whisk it while you're adding it in just so everything combines well and there are no clumps that form. So after that you'll let it simmer on your stove for about two to three minutes so it gets nice and thick and then you'll add in your two cups of cooked chicken of course I added in my rotisserie chicken let the chicken warm through and then you will add in your half a cup of sour cream you do want to make sure the heat is off when you do add the sour cream in just to ensure that the sour cream doesn't curdle so after you stir the sour cream in and it gets nice and creamy it's ready to serve of course, I served mine over those egg noodles, but you could serve yours over rice or really anything you like. I also paired this with broccoli on the side. This has a wonderful, creamy, rich taste, and I really love how it's a fun twist on stroganoff. My family really loves it. Now we're making this coconut curry, and if you've never tried coconut curry before or made it, I definitely recommend this recipe. I'm starting out by slicing one red bell pepper up and then over to my large pot, I'm going to be adding about a tablespoon and a half of some olive oil. Next, you'll add one diced up white onion to that oil, and you're going to cook this onion until it starts to get soft. It's going to take about three to five minutes. Now that my onion is soft, I'm going to be adding in three tablespoons of this red curry paste along with two teaspoons of ground coriander and two teaspoons of some curry powder. Next, you'll add in about a tablespoon of some ground ginger and a tablespoon of some minced garlic. Stir this around pretty frequently for about two minutes. Now is the time you're going to be adding an additional tablespoon of olive oil in your pot with your pound of boneless skinless chicken breast that you cubed. Cook this chicken breast until it's only about 80% of the way cooked. I know that seems funny, but it's going to continue to cook after you add in your one tablespoon of some brown sugar at this point and then add in one can of some coconut milk. This next step is optional, but I am adding in a couple tablespoons of some fresh lime juice. I think that adds it's great flavor and then our bell pepper that we just cut up a little bit earlier stir this around for an additional five to seven minutes or until the sauce thickens continue to simmer it and let the chicken cook through here is the finished product the chicken is completely cooked at this point I just topped mine with some fresh cilantro and I placed it in a bed of some white rice this meal is so so good it is not spicy so if you're worried about it being spicy it's not spicy it just has some amazing flavor. With a family favorite, this creamy chicken pasta is so, so good. To my slow cooker, I'm adding two medium-sized chicken breasts. You'll want to sprinkle one packet of some of this Italian salad dressing mix on top. Next, you'll add one can of cream of chicken soup. You can make your own homemade cream of chicken soup, but I just decided to use this can. Lastly, you're going to add eight ounces of some cream cheese. This will cook on low for six hours or until your chicken is completely cooked through. Once my slow cooker only had a few more minutes of cooking time left on it, I decided to boil up my half a pound of pasta. I used two different types of pasta, just whatever I had left over, but you could use any type of pasta you have on hand. So now back over to my slow cooker, I'm just shredding up my chicken. Then you'll add the cooked pasta in, give it a really good stir, and then it's ready to serve. Here's the finished product. I always love sprinkling the top with a little bit of some black pepper and some shredded cheese. This meal is so, so good. You could also top it with some cooked crumbled bacon and that would be spectacular, but this is a family favorite like I said before. These baked quesadillas are definitely a go-to meal here in my home. We really love them. So to get them started, I'm just cooking up one pound of some ground beef in my pan, or you could use ground turkey, whatever your preference is. After my ground beef was through cooking, I drained out any excess grease, and now I'm going to be seasoning it with about a tablespoon and a half of some taco seasoning, and then I added a third a cup of some water. I'm just going to stir this mixture all together to combine. 
Over to my sheet pan, I have it lined with some parchment paper and then I just sprayed it with some avocado oil spray. You could use any type of tortilla you like for this recipe, but I just used the little street flour tortillas. Those are my favorite for this recipe. Anyways, I just put a little bit of some refried beans on the bottom of the tortillas. Next, you'll add a scoop of the taco mixture and then just a little bit of some Colby Jack cheese on top. You could add any other toppings you like inside of these quesadillas like jalapeno, seriously, anything you like, go ahead and add it in. I placed another tortilla on the very top and then sprayed it with some avocado oil spray. This will bake in a preheated oven to 450 degrees for about eight to 12 minutes or until the cheese is nice and melty and the top of the tortillas are crisp. Here's the finished product. I just served it with some salsa, sour cream, jalapenos, lime, and iceberg lettuce. I really love making these quesadillas because it kind of kicks the normal quesadillas up a notch and and it's just really fun and easy to make. My family enjoys it. My husband absolutely loves country fried chicken. So to get this one started, I have two medium sized chicken breasts right here. I'm adding it to my large gallon size Ziploc bag. And then I'm sealing the bag up and we're going to be tenderizing this meat and we're going to be making it even in size and thin. I like to make my chicken super thin. It will just come out really, really tender and nice in the end like that. So now that we're finished in this bowl, I'm adding one egg along with one cup of buttermilk and then just a little dash of salt and pepper. You're going to whisk this mixture all together. After you're finished with that, you're going to set your chicken in that egg wash and set it to the side. We're going to get started on the brown gravy now. So I'm just using this packet of brown gravy and I followed the directions on the back. You could make brown gravy however you like making it, but I found that this packet is quick and easy and it still tastes really good. The flour and breadcrumb mixture to coat the chicken is so simple to make. So in this bowl, I added a half a cup of flour along with a third a cup of breadcrumbs. And then for the seasonings, it's just a half a teaspoon of salt and paprika, and then a fourth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper and a fourth a teaspoon of regular pepper. And then you are going to whisk this together. To coat the chicken, all I do is drip off any of the excess egg wash and then I place it in that flour mixture. I make sure I coat it super well on both sides and then I set it on a separate plate. I do wanna let you know, if you wanna double this recipe for more people, it is so easy to do that. To fry up our chicken in my pan right here, I'm adding about a cup and a half of vegetable oil. You do wanna make sure your oil is hot before you add the chicken in, just so the chicken crisps up nicely in the end. So now that my pan's hot, I'm just adding the chicken and I'm going to cook it for about five minutes on each side or so, or until it reaches 165 degrees internally. Once it did reach 165 degrees internally, I removed the chicken to a separate plate lined with paper towels. You can't have country fried chicken without mashed potatoes, so I served it over a bed of mashed potatoes with steamed peas on the side, and of course, I poured plenty of the brown gravy over the top. This meal is not very hard to throw together, and it is comfort food to the max. Now we're going to be making this Mexican beefy and potato recipe. This one's a hit. So I'm going to begin by peeling and dicing two yellow potatoes, one onion and one green bell pepper into smaller pieces. After I am finished with that, I'm going to set those to the side. Over to my pan, I have a pound of some ground beef in there. I'm just going to cook this ground beef until it's about 80% of the way cooked. Now that it is 80% of the way cooked, if yours is super greasy, go ahead and remove some of the grease. But now I'm adding in the vegetables that we just chopped up and I'm going to stir them around for about two to three minutes.
After letting that cook together for a few minutes, it's time to add in your tablespoon of minced garlic. Let the garlic become fragrant. Then you're gonna add in the rest of your ingredients. So you'll wanna add in eight ounces of tomato sauce, a cup and a half of beef broth, and then for all of the seasonings I'm adding in, I'm just doing a half a teaspoon of salt, just a dash of pepper, one bay leaf, a teaspoon of cumin, and then a teaspoon of coriander. You're going to stir this all together Together and then put the lid on top and let this simmer on your stove for about 10 minutes. Here we are 10 minutes later. I'm going to remove the lid, give this a really good stir, and you see all the liquid in there. You pretty much want that to evaporate, so let it simmer uncovered for an additional 10 minutes. And then once it looks something like this, remove the bay leaf and then it is ready to serve. You could really serve this meal however you choose to do so, but what we like to do is serve it with some white rice and then some crispy tortillas on the side with guacamole, cherry tomatoes, and lime and cilantro. This is so delicious. We are huge chicken alfredo fans in this family, so now that's what we're making. I have three chicken breasts right here. I slice them in half horizontally so it appears as more. I'm seasoning them on both sides with salt, pepper, dried oregano, and dried basil. You could use less or more chicken depending on your preference for this recipe, but I did want plenty of leftovers, so that's why I did so much chicken. Over to my pan, I have a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to cook this chicken Chicken for about three to four minutes on each side or until it reaches 165 degrees internally. Once it does, I'm removing it to a separate plate and setting this plate to the side. It's time to begin on the sauce now. I just melted down my four tablespoons of butter and then added in a tablespoon of minced garlic. Stir the garlic around until it's fragrant and then add in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Whisk the flour around until it's a nice golden co color and then you will slowly add in a cup and a half of heavy cream. While you're adding it in, make sure you do whisk so there are no clumps in the end and then slowly add in a cup and a half of regular milk. Let this simmer on your stove until the sauce thickens. While that is happening, I'm going to boil up my one pound of Italian fettuccine noodles. You could use a pound of any noodle you like for this recipe though. So now that my sauce has thickened to the way that I like it to be, I just added in a little shake of some salt and pepper, one cup of Parmesan cheese, and you're going to whisk this all together until the sauce thickens up. One thing that I do like to do that is definitely optional, I don't do this all the time, is add in about a fourth a cup of some fresh basil. I do have a little basil plant in my kitchen, so that's why I like to add it in occasionally, but if you don't have basil, don't worry about that. This is the finished product. This chicken alfredo is so simple to throw together, and it is absolutely delicious. I just paired it with a really simple side salad on the side. I like to put a mixture of spinach and romaine in my salad with some sliced almonds, cranberries, cherry tomatoes, and avocado. I could make this lemon chicken orzo over and over again and never get tired of it. So to begin, in my Dutch oven, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil and then I added a pound of cubed chicken breast. I'm seasoning the chicken with plenty of salt and pepper and I'm cooking it completely through. Once it is 100% of the way cooked through, I'm removing it to a separate plate and setting this plate to the side. To my same Dutch oven that I cooked the chicken in, I added an additional tablespoon of olive oil with one diced up white onion. Cook this onion until it is soft. It should take you about three to five minutes, I'd say. Now that it is soft, I added my one cup of orzo along with a tablespoon of minced garlic. Saute this together for about a minute. Of course, you will need some type of liquid, so I'm adding two and a fourth cup of chicken broth in. Stir this all together and then let it simmer covered for about five minutes. I did stir it every couple of minutes while it was simmering to ensure the orzo doesn't stick, but after those five minutes of simmering, I added a pound of asparagus. I did cut my asparagus into smaller pieces. And then I'm going to place the lid back on top and let this simmer for an additional five to seven minutes or until my orzo is tender. So here it is. My orzo is nice and tender and my asparagus is cooked. I'm going to be adding in about two cups of chopped fresh spinach with the cooked chicken. Mm -hmm. 
After my spinach wilted down, I added in the juice from one lemon along with a fourth a cup of shredded Parmesan cheese. I gave this a good stir. Once the Parmesan was melted down, it was ready to serve. If you've never tried orzo before or you've never had anything like this, I definitely suggest it. I think you should give this recipe a shot. It has amazing flavor and then I really love the uniqueness about it. Now we're making this Cajun shrimp and vegetable dish. To get this one started, I have two zucchinis right here. I'm dicing them into smaller pieces. Next, I'm going to be dicing one orange bell pepper along with a pound of asparagus. I have my kielbasa sausage right here. I'm going to be slicing it in two discs. After that, I set the sausage to the side and in this glass bowl right here, I have a little under a half a pound of raw shrimp. To the shrimp, add the sausage along with the vegetables that we cut up. The rest of the ingredients I'm adding in is two tablespoons of olive oil, a dash of salt and pepper, and then two tablespoons of Cajun seasoning, or you could use Old Bay seasoning, whatever you prefer. Stir this together to get all of the veggies and everything coated in the seasonings and the oil. Over to my hot pan on the stove, I'm going to be adding this mixture right in there and then you are going to cook it for about 5 to 10 minutes or until the vegetables are tender and the shrimp is cooked through. Here's my big bowl of food. I love this meal because it is packed with so many vitamins and nutrients from all of the vegetables in there and the shrimp. This one is a total hit for our family. I haven't made sweet and sour chicken in such a long time and let me tell you, I am so happy that I finally made it again. So in this bowl, I have a little over a half a pound of some chicken breast that I cut into about bite-sized pieces. I seasoned it with some salt and pepper and now I'm going to set it to the side. To make the sweet and sour sauce in this little bowl, I just added a fourth a cup of some ketchup. Next, I'm adding three tablespoons of sugar, two and a half tablespoons of white vinegar, a teaspoon of some low sodium soy sauce, and then you're going to whisk this all together. To begin on the flour mixture in this bowl, I'm going to be adding three tablespoons of some all-purpose flour. Next, I'll add about two teaspoons of some cornstarch, a fourth a teaspoon of baking powder, just a little dash of some salt, fourth a cup of cold water, and one egg white. Whisk this all together. To start frying up our chicken, I have three cups of some super hot canola oil in my large pot right here. You're going to grab a piece of your chicken, put it in the coating that we made up, and then place it into the hot oil in your pot. I did do this in three separate batches because you don't want your chicken to be overcrowded in your pot while it is frying. It just won't cook very evenly and the coating will probably fall off. So after about a minute of frying my first batch of chicken, I gave it a good stir and this is going to continue to fry for about five more minutes. After it is through frying, I just put it on a separate plate and set the plate to the side. So now that all three of my batches of chicken are finished frying up, I'm going to start on the sauce mixture. So in my saucepan, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil. I added two bell peppers, a green one and a red one, sauteed those around for about two to three minutes. And then I added our sweet and sour sauce that we made up. I'm going to stir the sweet and sauce, sour sauce around until it starts to thicken. Once it has thickened up, you're going to add your chicken, give it a good stir, let the chicken get coated in the sauce, and then it is ready to serve. I served mine over a bed of some white rice with some sesame seeds on the top. If you like yours extra saucy, just double the sweet and sour sauce, but seriously, this recipe is spot on. 
Now we're making another one that my whole family enjoys, some chicken tacos, but these are exceptionally good. So to this bowl, I added two tablespoons of some taco seasoning. I just used the packet form or you could make your own homemade taco seasoning, either works fine. Five tablespoons of olive oil and three tablespoons of lime juice. You're going to whisk this all together. Now we're gonna be adding in our chicken. This is just one pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast. I'm going to mix this all together and coat the chicken in that yummy taco sauce. You're going to stick this in the fridge to marinate for about an hour. If you don't have an hour to let this chill, that's fine. You could just, you know, put it on the stove and it will still turn out great. So now here we are about an hour later after our chicken is through marinating. I'm just going to cook this chicken up on the stove. Here is the finished product. I served mine on some crispy, smaller sized tortillas with lime, cilantro, guacamole, cilantro, lime rice, and pinto beans. All of the fixings that I enjoy. My whole family loves these tacos because you can make them however you want to and they're just so delicious. Now we're making Hawaiian chicken with coconut pineapple rice. To begin, I have a pound of boneless, skinless chicken thighs right here. To the chicken, add a fourth a cup of low sodium soy sauce, a half a cup of canned coconut milk, two tablespoons of honey, and then you'll add in a fourth a cup of pineapple juice. I just strained this 20 ounce can of pineapple chunks because you'll need it in a moment. And I only used a fourth a cup of the juice from the pineapple chunks. I saved the rest of the juice um, for in a moment. But anyways, I added a teaspoon of olive oil and a dash of salt. Give this a stir and then put cling wrap over the top and let this marinate in your fridge for at least an hour. Or you could make this the night before and let let it marinate all night and all day while you're at work. Now that my chicken is almost finished marinating in this measuring cup right here, we are going to start on the liquid for the coconut rice. So with the rest of the pineapple juice that we didn't use up from earlier, I added it in along with a 13 ounce can of coconut milk. And then you're going to add water until your measuring cup hits three cups. So I added in about a half a cup of water, just, you know, until it hits the three cup line, and then whisk this all together and then set it to the side. In my pot right here, I have about a tablespoon of hot olive oil. Now you are going to remove your chicken from the marinade, add it into your pot, and then cook it on each side for about three to four minutes just to sear it really well. And then after that, remove the chicken to a separate plate. Into the same pot that we just cooked our chicken in, go ahead and add the liquid that we made up for the coconut rice, and then add in your seasoning. So a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of ground ginger, a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth a teaspoon of pepper. Scrape all of the bits off of the bottom of your pot at this point. There's a lot of flavor in those bits. And then add in your cup and a half of jasmine rice, or you could add in long grain white rice, whatever you prefer. And then the can of the pineapple chunks that is drained. Give this a stir, bring it up to a simmer. Add the chicken that we seared a little bit earlier and then put the lid on top and let this simmer on low for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the rice is tender. This Hawaiian chicken over coconut pineapple rice is definitely restaurant quality. That chicken is perfectly juicy and the rice has so much flavor. I really think you would love this one. My daughter could eat plates and plates full of it. 
Now we have to make these meatball subs. They have to be my favorite meatball subs of all time. So to the bottom of my slow cooker, I just added 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes along with a teaspoon of basil, fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, three tablespoons of minced garlic. If you're wondering what we're doing at this point, we're actually making the marinara sauce. And then I added three tablespoons of olive oil with a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. Whisk this all all together to get all of the ingredients combined well. And of course, you could always use frozen meatballs in your slow cooker, but these homemade meatballs are out of this world and they're so easy to make. So to get them started in this bowl, I added my one pound of ground beef. It was 93.7. You do want super lean ground beef like that. Along with one egg, three fourths cup of Italian style breadcrumbs, a tablespoon of minced garlic, three tablespoons of fresh parsley, and if you don't have fresh parsley on hand, you could skip that or add in a teaspoon of dried parsley. Now I'm mixing this all together, and once it's well combined, I am just going to be rolling this ground beef mixture into little meatballs just like this. After I was through rolling out my 15 to 16 meatballs, I brought them over to the marinara sauce and I'm just going to plop them right in there. This will cook on low for about seven hours once it is through slow cooking. Just check in the center of one of the meatballs to make sure it is no longer pink. So after I'm finished with that, I brought them over to my sub rolls and I'm going to be placing about three to four meatballs in each sub roll and then sprinkling plenty of mozzarella cheese on top. I placed this under my broil broiler in my oven for about two minutes to make the cheese nice and melty. Here is my meatball sandwich. Everything had so much flavor. The meatballs were nice and tender and every bite was the perfect bite for this meatball sandwich. So if you're a meatball sandwich fan, I really think you'd enjoy this one. These stuffed bell peppers make for a perfect weeknight meal or you could meal prep them so easily. To begin, in my pan, I just added one pound of ground beef. I'm going to cook this ground beef up. If you wanted to, you could use ground sausage or ground chicken as a substitute, but once my ground beef was cooked, I removed any excess grease and then added one can of diced tomatoes, half a teaspoon of salt, fourth a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and a half a teaspoon of garlic and onion powder. For the Parmesan cheese, I'm adding in a half a cup of that grated Parmesan cheese. I gave this a good stir and then I I thought, oh geez, I totally forgot to add in the tomato sauce. So now I just added in eight ounces of tomato sauce, gave this one last good stir to melt the cheese down. Once my cheese was melted, I removed this from the stove. I'm using four bell peppers for this recipe. You could use any color. I sliced them in half and removed all of the insides and the seeds. It's fairly simple to stuff our bell peppers, so with a smaller sized measuring cup, I'm just scooping a little bit of that ground beef mixture out and placing it inside of each of our bell pepper halves. You can't forget about the cheese on top of the stuffed pepper. So with a third a cup of Parmesan cheese and a half a cup of mozzarella cheese, I'm sprinkling it on top of the peppers. This will bake on 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes. Here are my beautiful bell peppers ready to enjoy at dinner time. Like I said previously, if you have a super busy week, these bell peppers are perfect to meal prep for lunches or dinners. Now we're making this loaded Cajun chicken, potato, and green bean dish. On my sheet pan, I'm going to be adding a pound and a half of these little red potatoes that I diced into smaller pieces. If you don't wanna use red potatoes, you could use golden. To the potatoes, I added a tablespoon of olive oil along with a half a tablespoon of this Cajun seasoning. I'm going to mix everything together and then place this in my preheated oven to 400 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the potatoes start to get soft. While those potatoes are in the oven, I'm going to start on the chicken. I have a pound of chicken breast I cut into thinner pieces like this. So to my chicken I'm adding one tablespoon of olive oil along with a half a tablespoon of that Cajun seasoning and then you are going to stir this all to combine. Mm -hmm. 
Once my potatoes are out of the oven, I'm going to push them to one side of my sheet pan to make room for my chicken and my green beans. While I'm pushing them to one side of the sheet pan, I am kind of stirring them. But once I'm finished with that, I'm going to be adding the chicken that we just made up to the center of the sheet pan. I'm going to spread it out as even as possible. In this bowl right here, I have about a pound of trimmed fresh green beans. I'm adding them to the other side of the chicken with a half a tablespoon of olive oil on top and then just a little dash of that Cajun seasoning. I'm going to place this sheet pan back in my oven for about 25 minutes to bake or until my chicken is cooked completely through. I really enjoy this Cajun chicken, but if you wanted to use other seasonings like smoked chicken seasoning instead of the Cajun seasoning, or seriously any other type of seasoning instead of that Cajun seasoning, you certainly can, and this will still be just as delicious. Now we're making a classic, this chicken fried rice. So to begin, I'm using my Instant Pot to cook my rice, but you could cook your rice any way you like cooking rice. I added a cup and a half of rinsed white rice with a cup and a half of water and a tablespoon of olive oil. All I have to do for my Instant Pot is put the lid on top, press the rice button, and then after my rice was finished cooking, I actually let it completely cool down. So now I'm going to dice up one onion and about three large carrots. The fried rice sauce for this recipe is very simple. It, all it is is a tablespoon of fish sauce. If you don't care for fish sauce or don't have it on hand, you could definitely skip that part and it will still be delicious. A tablespoon of sugar, a dash of salt and pepper, and a tablespoon and a half of low sodium soy sauce. Mix this together and then there you go. That is your fried rice sauce. To my pan on the stove, I have a tablespoon of hot olive oil in there. I'm cracking two eggs in and then you are going to scramble these eggs up as if you normally would for scrambled eggs. And then once they are cooked, remove them to a separate plate and then set this plate to the side. To the same pan that we just cooked the eggs in, add an additional tablespoon of olive oil with the onion and the carrots that you diced up. Saute the onion and carrots together for a couple of minutes until they start to become soft. Now I'm adding in my tablespoon of minced garlic and ginger. Stir this together until the garlic and ginger are fragrant. And then you are going to be adding in a pound of cubed boneless skinless chicken breast. And then you are going to cook this chicken until it is 100% of the way cooked through. With the rice that is now completely cooled down that we cooked up earlier in the Instant Pot, I'm adding it into our cooked chicken and I'm going to let the rice saute in with the rest of the ingredients for about a minute or two. With the fried rice sauce that we made up earlier, I'm just pouring it all over the top and I'm going to stir everything to combine. You want everything coated in that fried rice sauce. And then you are going to be adding in about a cup of frozen sweet peas and then the egg that we scrambled earlier. This is optional, but I do love adding in these pineapple trivets, the, about a fourth a cup of them. I just think it adds a great flavor to this recipe. I'm stirring everything together and I'm going to let this cook for about three to five minutes and then it's ready to serve. I really love making my family this fried rice because you could throw a bunch of veggies into this recipe, cook everything together, and then there you go. You have the easiest dinner to serve onto your table. I hope you found a recipe for yourself today and I have so many more videos like this on my channel, so make sure you subscribe down below the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.